Thanks, everybody. We'll have uh, Coach Martin make an uh, opening statement, ask each player to make an opening statement, then we'll open it up to Q&A. So, Coach? Uh, a lot of credit to those kids from uh, Illinois State. They just they beat us to every 50-50 ball. We couldn't guard them off the dribble. Uh, all we did was foul, and then they were active defensively, and, and we never attacked them. And uh, credit to them. Uh, they did a good job of rebounding the ball, and we didn't. And that led to second shot opportunities, which they executed. No, uh, I mean, they did a very good job rebounding the ball, like Asani said, giving them a second shot opportunity. Uh, they were they were aggressive off the dribble, and we we gave them a second chance every time. Chris and Asani, what was it about their zone that was making it so hard to get the ball inside and then to hold on to it when you did get it inside? Um. They had, a, they had a wide zone. I mean, their guys had their hands up. I feel like we worked the ball around. We just didn't hit shots. Uh, I feel like they, they, they were pretty aggressive. I mean, that was just uh, our fault to not be uh, more aggressive to, to, to make sure we, we don't get the ball loose or anything like that. That was our fault. Another question? Frank, just for Chris and Sonny, what was – how tough was it to get a rhythm today um, with the whistle seemed to be blowing every 10 or so seconds out there? Was that tough to kind of generate, especially when you're trying to come back in a game like that? Well, I mean, the refs calling fouls was to their advantage. I mean, it's our fault. We didn't guard the ball, but they didn't have that many players that they, they brought with them, so they were able to catch their breath every time the, the ball was stopped. Uh, I feel like... Uh, we 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 playing in a neutral site, so uh, the energy got to come from the guys that uh, that already been through it, like uh, me, Hassani, and uh, the leaders. Uh, we didn't do a really good job, you know, setting an example and coming, being focused, playing hard, and be on top of a game uh, uh, from the jump ball. Hassani, uh, was there anything about the venue, sight lines uh, that just didn't look right? <coughs> Was there uh, something that kept you guys from hitting that many shots based on the venue? No, that's not an excuse. We just didn't hit shots. Coach, what are the challenges of preparing for an 11:30 game compared to you know prime time seven o'clock or nine o'clock? The same as they were for Illinois State. <laughs> it's, it's you know the game's scheduled. You know what time it's at. It's your responsibility to get yourself ready to play at that time. That's why we practiced early yesterday, so we can get ourselves accustomed to being ready to go at that same time today. We weren't ready to go. Our, 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 you know, They came at us, and our defense was bad. And when you're in a half-court game uh, and your defense is bad, that's not good. Coach, what did you think the way you guys attacked their zone, typically in the first half? We never got inside the zone. And when we threw it to five feet, our bigs couldn't score. You know, we, we got the ball in there and our bigs couldn't score. And our guards never, never drove the zone. They just kept passing it around the zone. That's to their advantage. Um, and you can only run so many plays against the zone. There's no such thing as running plays against the zone. We ran the plays that we got against the zone, we ran and we got shots when we ran them. But for the most part, the zone will morph to the play. So to attack a zone, it's not running a play, it's attacking the zone. And you got to get inside the zone. We never, never played off the dribble to get it inside the zone. And they, I don't care if you're a man defensive team, a zone defensive team, a pack line, a deny, I, I don't care what you do defensively. The object of the game is get the ball between two defenders on offense. On defense, the object of the game is don't let the ball get between two defenders. We never got it between two defenders. They got it between two defenders every time they wanted to. They won. Frank, when, when Chris and, and Mike and Asani had to take a seat and the young guys had to come in, what did you see from them playing as a group? Uh, did you see some things to build on? The same thing you saw against Virginia Tech. A bunch of young guys. That's why I threw them and play them the whole game, regardless of the score of that game. Guys that, that don't know how to play. Uh, at this level yet, and you know that's part of our journey as a team. Those guys are going to have to learn and grow up and understand the sense of urgency, the disciplines, the strength. Uh, but it starts with them. 
They didn't do a very good job for us early in the game. That's why they were on the bench with foul trouble. Coach, are you eager to get back out on the court again tomorrow? It's not like you guys have to wait a couple of days. You have to get back out and kind of refresh things and get going again tomorrow. Does that excite you as a coach? If you're going to pout, there's no place for you in sports. I mean, uh, it's uh, uh, whether you win or lose, you better be ready to go the next day. It's all about going through the journey and, and, and learning how to do your job every single day, how to be prepared every single day. Uh, when they put this tournament together and we knew we were in it, we knew we were going to play on Thursday and Friday. It's not a surprise that we got to play tomorrow. We Mentally, we better be ready to go tomorrow. We'll take another loss. It's real simple. Sonny, Chris, how do you guys prevent that? How do you guys talk to the younger guys to make sure they're up and mentally ready for a 1030 game? Uh, we got to make sure guys get you know their rest and play early again. I mean, I've seen a couple guys you know, with their eyes closed, sleeping on the bus on the way here. I'm not going to let that happen again. Any more questions? Asani, with the, the zone like that, you guys are, are starting to launch threes. I mean, do you feel like you can be a, a great three-point shooting team? You know, a lot of them going for that. Yeah. I mean, we got a lot of guys that can shoot the ball. We just didn't hit shots today. And we, we didn't make our layup, so <laughs> couldn't score at all. Frank, despite all the offensive struggles and defensively, you're still within one with three minutes left. What are you feeling then? And do you feel like this team, is that kind of next step is, is finishing the opponent off like that? Just two, we had two real bad, bad defensive plays once we got it to even. Uh, Mike Coltrart gets a defensive rebound, and I don't know what he's thinking about. He decides to just kind of let me get rid of it because I don't want to get hit. So they steal it, they score. And now we've got a three-point game, and Felipe decides to just push a guy off the ball and give him two free throws. Uh, so it, all we did was foul. When, when, when your jump shot's not going in, you still have to figure out a way to win. And you win by defending and rebounding and making free throws. And we didn't do, we didn't make jump shots, we didn't defend, and we didn't rebound today. When you shoot 29% from the field and your, your, your guys that played at the four and the five combined grabbed five offensive rebounds, that's not very good. That's not very good, so. Brian, uh, Chris only had like had one shot from the floor. Was that more the result of their, of their defense, which you're talking about, the guards not getting the ball? He had plenty of opportunities, Phil. He couldn't convert the shots, but they fouled him. So he, when you shoot free throws, those are shot attempts that don't go down as shot attempts. He was actually 0 for whatever from the field. But he couldn't convert the shot, but he made 10 out of his 14 free throws. Coach, you had 32 attempts at three. Is that too many in your mind to throw up threes at, uh, at this juncture in the season? I, I, I don't think it's too many. The problem is not the number of threes we shot. The fact is that we didn't get inside the zone. Our guards, we work on it. We call it zone concepts in our practice. And our guards work at trying to get the ball between two defenders to play off the dribble against a zone. That's how you attack a zone. You don't attack a zone by passing it around. Everyone thinks you pass it around. That's how you beat zones. That's what the zone wants you to do. You got to move the zone and get inside the zone. Our guards would not get inside the zone off the dribble today. All they did was pass it around. Pass. And the two or three times that we did get inside the zone, our guys tried to take on the rim for layups. They're in a zone to protect the rim. They're not in the zone to give you the rim. So we, we got to get better at that. We, we, we were very bad today at driving the zone. Very bad. But give them credit. I tried to ball screen the zone. And we still couldn't get inside the zone. Uh, give them credit. They were tougher than us. They kept us out of the paint. We couldn't get in the paint. And then on the other side of the floor, they got it in the paint. And we couldn't keep them out of the paint. It's a pretty simple formula. That's why they won. Last question, guys. Okay, thank you, Coach. Thanks, Coach.